Let's talk about hazards in food. There are three basic types of hazards present in food. The first is physical hazards. This includes things such as metal shavings, bones, glass, wood that might end up in a food product and cause damage to the teeth, mouth, or digestive tract. Next, chemical hazards, which include allergens. The big eight allergens are dairy, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, crustaceans, wheat, and soy. There are certainly other food allergens, but these are the eight that food processors in the U.S. must include on their labels. Other countries may have additional allergens that are required to be present on labels. Other chemical hazards would include mycotoxins produced by mold growth and also other chemicals used in food processing or for cleaning and sanitizing. Finally, there may be biological hazards present in food. This includes bacteria, viruses, and parasites that can cause foodborne illnesses. Pictured here are the five types of microorganisms relevant to food. Molds and yeast do not typically present a food safety issue present in food. They are associated with spoilage. There are types of molds that can produce toxins as they grow in food, but these are considered to be chemical hazards. Certain species of bacteria, parasites, and viruses can lead to foodborne illness, and these are biological food hazards. There are 31 major pathogens that contribute significantly to foodborne illness in the United States. The leading cause of foodborne illness is norovirus, which contributes to over 59% of all foodborne illnesses in the United States. Salmonella, a bacteria, contributes to 11% of illnesses. Clostridium perfringens, another bacteria, contributes to 10% of illnesses. Campylobacter, yet another type of bacteria, constitutes 9% of illnesses, and all other pathogens contribute to 11% of those remaining total foodborne illnesses reported every year in the United States. In terms of deaths caused by biological hazards, it's estimated that salmonella causes the highest number of deaths, followed by Toxoplasma gondii, which is a parasite, Listeria monocytogenes, a bacteria, causes a high number of deaths, and norovirus contributes to 11% of deaths, while all other pathogens contribute to the remaining deaths associated with foodborne illness. This may give you an indication of the severity of some of these individual illnesses. There's also a high number of foodborne illnesses for which we do not know or have not identified the causative agent. There are instances of acute gastroenteritis documented every year for which the cause has not been determined, but may be linked to food. This could be something new that we have not yet identified or due to the fact that we could not determine the agent or the food linkage associated with these individual illnesses. Overall, it's been estimated that every year there is approximately 48 million cases of foodborne illness in the United States. This means that one in every six Americans gets sick from contaminated food each year. Microorganisms that cause foodborne illness come from many sources. Some come from environmental sources, such as water or soil. Clostridium botulinum, the bacteria that causes botulism, is a naturally occurring soil microorganism. Therefore, any food that contacts soil at some point, which is basically all food, may be contaminated with the spores of this organism. In a, in a food exposed to oxygen, this is okay because the bacteria cannot grow and produce toxin, but in a food item that has an anaerobic environment, such as a canned food, we assume that the bacteria is present, so we have to ensure that it does not grow in our canned food. Animals are also sources of microorganisms that cause foodborne illness. E. coli 0157H7 is res resident in the gut microbiome of cattle and other types of animals. It does not cause disease in these animals, but can lead to serious illness in humans. This is why beef is often associated with this particular pathogen. Similarly, salmonella can be present in the gastrointestinal and reproductive tract of poultry. It is often associated with poultry meat, but also ends up in eggs as a result. These pathogens that have an animal reservoir can easily come to cross-contaminate other food types. I'm sure everyone is aware about breaks in produce associated with E. coli 0157H7 and salmonella species. 
This happens when animal feces end up, ends up in these commodities. Finally, humans are an important source of microbial foodborne pathogens. We can shed high levels of pathogens in our feces when we have an infection and can transfer these pathogens from our hands to food during preparation.